We are riding this three-seater bike across America and living in our vans along the way. Our 3,000-mile route started in Oceanside, California and ends at the Atlantic Ocean in Annapolis, Maryland. We've been pedaling east for seven days now, and so far we've made it 618 of the 3,000 miles. We only have a little over a month to complete the journey, so our goal has been to average 100 miles a day on the Trandom for 30 days straight. So far, we haven't quite hit our daily goal, but we've had a ton of fun. And we've established a pretty good routine. Ladies ride in the mornings, guys ride in the afternoons, we find a cozy spot to park our vans together at night, then we do it all again. We're a little sore, but very happy with how smoothly things have been going. Until this week. In solidarity, we ride. <laughs> the fun continues, but uh, things have kind of started going downhill. And not the fun kind of downhill. We have to call the guys. <laughs> Blood just started dripping on the ground. This is the first time that my body has ever let me down during one of these physical challenges. <sighs> Good morning. It is day eight of biking across America. And last night we camped somewhere just outside of Flagstaff, Arizona, which means that we are now 20% of the way across the country. Turns out running a business um, and biking across America is a lot of work. Love you. Love you. Bye. Uh. Bye. It's a beautiful day to ride a tandem across the USA. Yeah. Who's ready to bike? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. Starting the day on the highway. Not my favorite, but at least there's a huge shoulder and there's two lanes. And most polite people get over, or at least slow down, or neither. Well, girls just got our first flat tire. Hi. Yeah, we're good. We're all good. Yeah, thanks for checking. You too, have a good one. We have to call the guys. We can't fix it. So I had one spare tube and I replaced it, but look at it. It's a total blowout, mate. <laughs> That's um, the new one. Bloody oh, blowout, no. some would say. Bloody blowout. How did this happen? This is from Ragbri. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are you yesterday? We're going to need a spare tire. Okay, got a flat. Well, technically we got okay. two flats. <laughs> I'm on the way. of the million reasons why I love this crew. We're hot, we're tired, we're on the side of a highway, we have a flat tire. Rick and the girls show up, we're having a dance party, they're switching the tire out like it's nothing. And everybody's happy. The best. Good job, girls. All right, we're gonna try to make up some time. Woo! Okay, new plan for the morning. I'm going to head 25 minutes backwards into Flagstaff to pick up three more inner tubes because we just used our last one. And I believe that's two flat tires in the last two days. So I think these extra inner tubes are gonna turn out to be pretty important. And for the next week, we're pretty much gonna be in the middle of nowhere. Oh, there's always something going on back there. It feels like we've just descended into the Grand Canyon. Gorgeous. Got him. Okay, before I leave town, I have one more stop that I think will bring the whole team a little extra joy today. I'm not really sure how we ended up in this situation, but I just took a photo with a complete stranger wearing his hat, and it smelled weird. But we're back on the road. Turning and burning the urine. Burning the day. With a big long climb. Bigger and longer than it looks. I think this is literally 
10 pounds worth of Taco Bell burritos. Also before a couple months ago, I had not been to Taco Bell in 15 years. And so if you think a 10 pound bag of Taco Bell burritos is gross, I hear you, but you haven't tried their Fiesta potato burrito. Zesty, zesty. All right, Jeff Nate is back in the kitchen ready to warm up 10 pounds of burritos for the team. What a beautiful sight. Oh my God, you are here. <sighs> These burritos came all the way from Flagstaff. Oh my gosh, how did you know? Are you ready for this? I Guess what you could put on this burrito. Tofu? French fries. No. Nate, you have no idea. I feel like I'm gonna cry. This is the most tired I've been. <laughs> it was such a big day. It was such a big day. The first half was like so good and then we got the flat and then it got hot and it just felt like a grind. Turning and burning. Y'all crushed it. My legs were burning in the van um, just driving up some of those hills. Thank you. Mm. And we almost got hit by a boat. You did. It's always these old dudes pulling something with their truck. Just get over yourself. <laughs> Slow down and get over. Give me some space. I love you. I love you. I'm what? glad you didn't die today. Me too. I'm gonna get on the bike. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. You deserve okay. a break. Thank we'll you take so the big much. day tomorrow. I think I'm also sunburned. <laughs> Kara, there's somebody that wants your Taco Bell. Oh my gosh. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Later, boy. Well, this is a first. I just got a nosebleed out of nowhere. I was going to the bathroom and I, blood just started dripping on the ground. Just add it to the list. All right, mates. It is time to drive. Y'all did the hard work. We rode until it was dark and then we got off the bike. There was a standoff. What? <gasps> yeah. Some guy had a gun, was shooting all around, and 20 cop cars went past us. Oh. It was hey, Matt, crazy. Please. We never saw the guy with the gun, but we saw the cop cars. Hey, Matt. Cheers. Cheers. To not getting run over by a truck carrying a boat, to not getting abducted by a crazy shooter guy, and to biking over 100 miles today. Best. Rick and Beck back before they had kids, hiked the Appalachian Trail. Their go-to meal on the trail was stove top stuffing and instant mashed potatoes. So tonight, for the first time, we are trying their go-to Appalachian Trail meal. Don't you worry, I got these instant mashed potatoes on lock. I got lunch and dinner from you today. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> and stir. Wow, you were so talented. Yeah, these might be a little watery. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> yes. I did, in fact, chop green onions. <gasps> I didn't know you were going to put all in one bowl and make it so pretty. I set a very low bar in this relationship. It's the thought that counts. We'll see if it lives up to the hype, Rick and Beck. Oh, it totally does. <gasps> the potatoes at the bottom are really hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do I even need to say it? I think it's pretty clear by now that Nate and I love AG1, and we've been drinking it ever since we discovered it over three years ago. During our normal life, we always try to get our daily dose of AG1, but on this trip, I've been even more adamant about not missing a day and having our AG1 first thing in the morning. So whether we're living the good life in Bora Bora, which feels like a lifetime ago, or living out of our van and biking across the US, we don't go anywhere without our AG1. Trust me, you can ask anyone we've ever traveled with. They will confirm. Go ahead, ask them. Just in case you've never heard of AG1, which would be very impressive, I'll quickly fill you in. Just one scoop of this stuff mixed with a little water contains 75 high quality, clean, 
whole food sourced ingredients, which somehow feels harder and harder to find these days. Which means this one simple, convenient drink contains tons of vitamins and minerals, which support your immunity. There are pre and probiotics, which are great for digestion and overall gut health. And maybe most importantly for this trip for us, there are adaptogens, superfoods, and antioxidants that help promote our metabolism, our energy levels, and recovery which we could all use some help on on this trip. I don't think there is a more convenient way to get all of this goodness in your body at once. And for us, AG1 is a no brainer. And if you haven't tried it yet, I have great news. If you use our link in the description below, you can get our special offer. Your first purchase will include the jar, plus they're throwing in five of these travel packs for free and a free bottle of their D3K2 drops, which we also take every day. I hope you love it as much as we do. Link below. Good morning. It's day nine. Fall goes as planned today. We should cross it into our third state. If you all do a big day, like if you do 60 miles again, then you get to cross the state line. <gasps> I want to cross the state 50, line. Then we get to cross this No! Line. Okay, before we get on the bikes, in the comments let me know, are you a <laughs> everything bagel with gross chives and onions or <laughs> cinnamon rolls? That's not fair! You're not like chives and everything bagel. Like it's delicious. If you're like chives and everything bagel, you're gonna make people <laughs> vote for you. We've done this before and I think I won. It says who? I felt like there were just way more salty comments than sweet. Same. All right, if you want me to shave my mustache, hey, then comment sweet, hey. sweet breakfast <laughs> <No>. down below. <laughs> Hey, hey, look who's here. Yeah, I also got a Coca-Cola. I um, know. It was a crazy day. All rolls are out the window. <laughs> I'm eating a Whopper. I have six Taco Bell burritos in the fridge. Oh, and I got a cookie. How's the ride been? Easy as. I ain't no thing. Got here in no time. I feel like an animal right now. I'm dirty, I'm hairy. I'm scarfing down my food so we can get back on the road. Ah. This has to be one of, if not the most unique Burger King in the world. It's a combination of a museum and Burger King. So you can get a Whopper and learn about the Navajo code talkers. So during World War II, the Japanese were deciphering all of the US codes. So we had no way to communicate and be able to strategically plan attacks without the Japanese knowing. Enter the Navajo code talkers, which were a group of Navajo who slightly altered their native language. And then they were able to communicate back and forth and the Japanese were never able to decipher it. So they allowed the US military to communicate in secret, which was a huge key to us winning the war. I never knew any of this had happened, and I learned it at a Burger King. All right, I've done some reading. This is all making a little more sense now. The father of the owner of this Burger King was in Japan during World War II as one of the code talkers. Yes. So cool. Beep, 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 beep. These views are awesome. So far, rock formations everywhere. I'm looking to see where Kara is on Find My right now, and from the satellite image, it literally looks like they're on the moon. Arizona, 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 Utah! Utah! Woo! It's just so mind blowing to me that we started in Oceanside, California and used our legs to get to Utah. Bodies are amazing. Hi! Hey. Hey. Oh. Oh. 
You know it was an easy day when I'm doing handstands at the end of our shift. Turns out we just descended the 2,000 feet that we climbed yesterday. Feeling great today. In honor of being in a new state, I thought I would bust out the new chamois. <laughs> I think I might have gotten it one size too small though. I wore it off of Amazon before I could try it on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your husband has one of these. Nay, you look amazing. That's what it was all about, bringing joy to the people. Oh, I need a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> Nate's a trendsetter. In solidarity, we ride. <laughs> Well, we're going too fast with the aerodynamics. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we're not. Oh God. Colorado! All right, today it truly feels like we're biking across America, just in scenery that never experienced in day to day life in the middle of nowhere. Boys, keep going. Woo! For some reason, we're getting more attention today. <laughs> today, we decided if we die out here, we die like real men wearing onesie spandex. Oh my gosh, the guys are no doubt getting the best part of the trip so far. This road is insane. It does not get much better than this. Biking across America, riding through Monument Valley, being goofy with friends. I feel like this is gonna be one of the days I remember most from the trip. We hit a top speed of 44 miles an hour yesterday. In these spandex, we might be able to break it. If we wreck right now, I'm gonna lose a lot of skin. I think it's important as a creator to de-emphasize the importance on virality mm -hmm. because we seldom go viral. Yeah. Like, we, our career... Too good! They've even got a sign for it! Quiet! Quiet! He's gonna say something! I'm pretty tired. I guess I'll go home now. This is actually the exact mile marker where that scene took place. Okie dokie. The girls just got to the little town of Bluff and if all goes smoothly, the dad should meet us here. I texted Nate and asked if he thought they would make it all the way here tonight and his reply was for sure. So they're obviously feeling confident in their cute matching outfits. Woo! I hope those brakes work. And with that being said, we're going swimming. Woohoo! Oh, with, <laughs> with Evie. We're going swimming with Evie. <laughs> Three, two, careful, one. Careful here. <laughs> it's so cold. Oh. Oh. It's right so cold. Oh. So it's day nine of this whole adventure and it is so much colder than the last river. I'm a little embarrassed to say it's also day nine of not showering. We've had two I showered swims. today. We swam in the Pacific Ocean on day one and we took a dip in the Colorado River on day three. And now we're swimming in the San Juan on day nine. That's right. I think some soap oh. needs to be involved. <laughs> hey. A donkey! Hey! I bet we hit 50. I saw 53.2. Oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> a new high speed record! That actually felt a little out of control. That was scary. Rick is the only person I would trust to be in the front of a tandem going 53 miles an hour with me on the back. No shame. Just doing it all. <sighs> I feel so much better. The town that we're riding through is called Mexican Hat, and this rock right up here is where it gets its name. I don't feel as gross as I thought I would after literally not using soap for nine days, but it still feels good to be clean. That was ridiculous. We were just sitting here minding our own business, and the front tire, <laughs> the bike had been sitting here for 10 minutes by itself, and then we just hear like, We barely have any service. I don't know if this call's gonna go through and we're stuck on the side of the road. The bike just got its second flat tire and we ran out of the tubes. The Google Fi wireless uh -oh. subscriber you have called is not available. Help! Kind of kidding. Uh, we are stuck on the side of the road as we get this. We're about 12 miles before Bluff. We're gonna go 
<laughs> rescue the dads. <sighs> Nate is going to be so jealous of my river shower. Even with two flat tires, this is still the best day of the trip. The triangle formation is complete. Look we at this campsite. Good morning. I think we may have found one of the most beautiful campsites in the entire US last night. It's like a miniature version of Monument Valley that we were riding our bikes through yesterday, except you can camp anywhere for free. This place is stunning. I think we were meant to pop our second tire where we did because otherwise we would have been way past this place. Good luck. Love you. Thanks, mate. I love you. See you in Anus. Oh. I think it's a nap, but. All right, the girls are off. It is now 10 a.m., which means we have about eight and a half hours of daylight left. The goal today was to do 80 miles to Cortez, which the mileage really shouldn't be an issue, but with the elevation, I'd say there's a good chance we're falling short of our goal again today. But everything will be fine as long as we can make it to Cortez without popping another tire, because we have no more spare tubes and the closest bike shop is 80 miles from here. We just made it to the city of Bluff again. <laughs> Yesterday we drove the vans here. It was very satisfying driving up those hills knowing that the guys were gonna be riding the bike behind us, but we all know how that went. So we just finished what they were supposed to do yesterday. We're feeling good. It's a Woo! beautiful day. As usual. Oh, <laughs> take it from this side. Is that their good side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As we were laying in bed last night, Kara told me that I needed to take a dip in the river this morning. Oh, it like hurts, it's so cold. I'm counting that as shower number two. Utah, 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 Colorado. I honestly did not know that we were at the border until just now. We're back in my favorite state. I'm like half dressed compared to yesterday. I feel like the only thing I'm missing is a big gold chain around my neck and a cigarette. All right, girls just drove to the town of Cortez, Colorado. Guys are shortly behind us and we're having a little bit of a admin day. First we went to Walmart. We bought all of their spare tubes, which was only five, just in case. Of course I got some snacks. How could I resist this and these and these? Now we're at the laundromat and while my clothes are being washed, the van needs a lot of help. Let's just say I need to do a full deep cleanse of this whole place. Honestly, this is the least I've wanted to get on the bike in a long time. Something about taking a shower and then eating a big lunch and it being really hot outside. But it only takes about 15 minutes of sweating and then you're back into it. I think it's dead. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Frankie was hanging out in here last night and laid on the bed for a minute and went, your blanket smells like a fart. <laughs> it's part of the inspiration for this admin day. Got a side cramp from watch. Do the play with you. How's it going? Hey. 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 Hello. Hello. What the heck are you ah! doing? You know her? Oh my God. What? So those two bikers that we just passed are the first two bikers that we've passed on this entire trip. And it just so happened that they're friends of Rick's from Leadville. <laughs> what are the chances? We made it to the big city, Cortez. Oh wow, looking good. So we just realized that on that ride, we crossed the Colorado border and didn't even realize it. 
and apparently the girls have a tradition of doing handstands on the border. So we decided, since we all missed it, we'll just have a competition here in the parking lot. my hand was going to start bleeding. Way to go, Evie. Good morning. So after doing handstands in the parking lot yesterday, the guys rode another 10 miles. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any free places to camp. So we ended up here, which I'm going to call a top secret location because technically, well, let's just say we've gotten in trouble for filming in places like this before. So let's, let's blur this out in this. So we're just in the van and we are not using the for any type of extra content, just to make that clear. I'm gonna end this little section of the video here and we will see you on the outside. Good morning, day 11. We started this ride at over 7,000 feet elevation and all the trees are starting to turn. This weather could not be any more perfect. Well, I have been debating this ever since I got off the bike yesterday and all morning, and I've decided that I am not going to get on the bike today. So if you followed any of our previous bike series, when we rode across Iowa during Ragbri, Beck hurt her knee, and that took her out of riding. And then last year, when we were riding the Tuscany Trail, Kara hurt her knee and that took her out of riding. Kara said her knee wasn't right for three months after Tuscany Trail. And yesterday, randomly midway through the ride, I started feeling some weird pain in my left knee. And I decided I'd just push through and finish out the day. And then last night when I got off the bike, it really started to swell and I took ibuprofen, I took turmeric pills, I've been putting this CBD icy hot stuff on it, just anything I could do to reduce the swelling. And unfortunately, my knee just still doesn't feel right. I'm not in an excruciating amount of pain, but I'm thinking about the longevity of the bike trip. We still have almost three weeks ahead of us, and I feel like if I can just maybe get a day of rest on this knee, it won't turn into a bigger problem. With that said, it is way harder than I would have thought it would be to sit out a ride. I feel like I'm letting the team down. I tend not to be as emotional as Kara, so there are no tears yet, but I kind of feel like that version of Kara crying on the inside right now. You got this, girls! Wow, it is beautiful today. These mountains with the golden trees. Evie, thank you. Appreciate you. Don't do too good, so they still want to ride with me. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Evie! This feels so wrong. Nate's knee was hurting, so now I'm back here with the dads. I'm a downhill dad. I'm a downhill dude. All right, well. We're in such different places emotionally. This morning's ride was so good. Like Colorado is just, it's full of extremes. The mountains were high, the oxygen levels were low, <laughs> but that downhill at the end was so satisfying. We're on the side of this busy, horrible highway and we found out that the chain is bent. So now mom, Beck has came back with some tools and we're gonna try and fix it. We were like 30 minutes in and yeah, it sucks. I'm walking around Walmart shopping instead of riding a bike. Uh, almost more dangerous than riding a bike. More traffic here. We should get these. I think we should get those. I'm not in the best mood for biking right now. 
I honestly did not even think we'd need Miss Thomas didn't bring it. Well, believe it or not, I would rather be on the bike, but I figured if I'm gonna have a day off, I might as well make the most of it. I'm trying to be positive. I'm honestly so sad I'm not on the bike. I think I'm actually just eating my sorrows away. Like like that, yeah. No, on the other side. Yeah, over there. Alright, now I'll try and play it. What's that? Is that part of the bike? <laughs> I don't think so. We were feeling a little down with the chain. Probably took a 30 minutes to an hour off the day, but Aaron gave us some energy. Yeah, yeah, you guys got it. That. Let's rock. Thanks, buddy. Be safe. All right. Take care. <laughs> See ya. So I backtracked into Durango to find a new chain for the bike just so we have a backup of everything. And walking down this main street just reminded me that this is where we finished the Colorado Trail. Such good memories here. Nate's knee very conveniently hurt on the one day that the shoulder is less than a foot wide and we have 70 mile an hour traffic filling right beside us. There they are. Uh-oh. I think it's just Dusty and Rick. Oh no! What happened? Oh my gosh, I feel even worse now. Two people on a three-seater bike, it's the most depressing thing I've ever seen. I will get on right now and ride without a chamois. Honestly, it's fine. We definitely miss your momentum, flats and downhill, but it's not, it's, you know, it's a little bit harder, but it's not like killing us really. <laughs> so rest up the knee. We feel bad that you, I know you want to be out here and I, and I know the knee must have really bothered you for you to not be out here. So take it easy for a day. Is Rick telling you the truth? It. How is it with two people? We're not the downhill dads without you. <laughs> That's so true. We are not. <laughs> but on the uphills, I can't say there's much of a difference. <laughs> All right, we found an epic camp spot for the night. I'm going to try to get a good night of sleep and hopefully I can ride in the morning. It's like a roller coaster right now. Like one minute it feels totally fine and the next minute I step up a step and I feel this like weird pain inside of it. We'll see. Happy one year running streak to you. Happy one year running streak to you. You are so strong and amazing. Happy one year running streak to you. Wow. Oh I love your candles. Gosh. I'm sorry, they're dripping everywhere. Yay! Last run ever! I can't believe I did that. <laughs> and Sarah do not enjoy public praise at all, but I'm going to give it to them anyway. For the last 365 days, they have not missed a single day of running. That means every day as we've been biking across America, either before or after they've been on the bike, they've ran at least a mile. And today is 365. Today is a big day for two reasons. Not only are we hitting the highest point on this entire ride, Wolf Creek Pass at almost 11,000 feet, but we are also crossing the 1,000 mile mark. Eee! And you may be wondering, why are we riding together in the van? This normally doesn't happen. Evie was nice enough to take the morning shift with the other girls this morning. And the plan this afternoon is for me to get back on the bike. Kara's gonna follow in the van. If my knee holds up, I'll ride the whole afternoon. And if not, Kara will get on the bike and seven for me. I'm just gonna be on call, ready to go, but I also might get the whole day off. Or you might have to ride the whole day. Or I might have to ride up the highest point of the entire journey. <laughs> One extreme or the other. Okay, so we've just pulled over on the side of the highway right at the 1,000 mile mark of the trip. Which makes us officially a third of the way through this journey. <laughs> we're building a little finish line and we're gonna celebrate as the girls come across. We just celebrated like that was the finish line, but I feel like that's the key to these big adventures. You have to celebrate little moments along the way. And the sun came out! Thank you for getting us over mile 1,000. Nice work. Okay. And the MVP. Yeah. And that. This is to help get me up Wolf Creek Pass. I have 
never been so excited to put on a chamois. It only got taken away from me for one day and I already missed it so much. But I'm gonna have to do a little. <laughs> Let's go. I'll see you at the top. Wish me luck. Good luck, mate. Thanks, Evie. Dusty. I'm here Love if you, you need me. Yep, get ready. Don't push it. Get ready. Okay. You got this, dude. Three, two, one. Here we go, up, up, and up. All right, right off the bat, the knee is feeling good, and we have over 3,000 feet of climbing in the next nine miles to reach the highest point on the entire trip. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Man, these trees are too good. We could not be passing through Colorado at a more perfect time. <coughs> it's bad when you take a deep breath and there's a dead animal on the side of the road. Uh, it just feels so good to be back on the bike. That's the road right up there. It goes back in there and comes up and it climbs around. Let's go. Oh man, this is a big, big uphill. But man, is it beautiful. I love Colorado. If you look right down the middle of this valley where those lakes are, that's where the guys got on the bike. We're about halfway up. The knee's feeling good. Rick and Dusty are feeling good. <sighs> I've taken so many deep inhales in the last hour. Got this. How are we going? Feeling good, baby. Yay! Okay, we'll go to the next spot. Don't blink, you might miss us. This is the best day ever. <gasps> Yay! Oh man, that was so encouraging. They've only gone a couple miles, but Nate was in great shape, great spirits, and I get the day off. And I get the day off. The girls have officially driven to the top of the pass and now we just wait for the dads. All right, we thought we'd give the girls a good laugh. It is absolutely freezing up here and we're about to strip down to ride the final 150 feet to meet them. There they are. Are they all three stripped down? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we're in a few more clothes than you were when you got here. And I'm absolutely freezing. They're nuts. They are nuts. We're nuts. This whole thing is nuts. This whole thing is nuts. Okay. Back down we go. We are going to head to camp and hope they make it to us before turning into icicles. <laughs> it's so cold and we're going so fast. The speed limit's 35! 49! 49! We're breaking the speed limit! A tunnel? What in the world? Whoa. This is epic! It's so beautiful! It's, uh, it's raining. <laughs> I don't even care, I'm so happy to be back on the bike. <laughs> it's so cold! We <laughs> just kind of stay. We don't need it. Are you okay? <laughs> it was so cold. I'm so proud of you. Mm. Oh, your face is freezing! <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, it is day 12, and I am just now making my signature van dish. Google. Peanut Karen's butter famous. Rum. Peanut butter oh. rum. Peanut butter rum. We are a little over a thousand miles in. The goal is to do a hundred miles a day, which means that technically we're about 200 miles behind schedule. Technically. But I think this was anticipated. Today was the first day where I was thinking about, oh, this is going to end. And I was sad about it. 
I really did think it would be harder than it is. It's not easy, but I was a little nervous that we were way in over our heads. The fact that we have made it to the peak of the entire trip and we're feeling good, oh. It's probably kept us busier than I thought. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily this just like absolute physical slog. Like I was scared that our bodies would be breaking down by now, but I feel like we're getting stronger mm -hmm. as a group. And so I think physically we'll be fine. I have had both my best day and my worst day all in the last three or four days. Yeah. I could not believe that I rode all the way up the mountain. Beck is the true MVP being in the front of the girls every single day because I go in the front sometimes for the guys and it's like twice as tiring just to be in the front controlling that whole bike. I think she's the number one person who's like holding all of this together. Cheers. She's gonna be ready to crush some climbs tomorrow. Yeah, I am. First third of the trip was great. Hopefully the next two thirds can live up to it. I gotta go use the public restroom. I need to put a shirt on. <laughs> That's the problem with these. You have to take off all your clothes to use the restroom. Yeah, I don't have a pocket <laughs> yeah. for our phone now. <laughs> this one actually has a pocket. I... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Still prioritizing safety. Nipple coverage. <laughs> I don't usually bike across America, but when I do, I ride a tandem. <laughs> Hello. Hey. asked me to film a teaser for the next video <laughs> but I don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> so if you want to watch our old videos and get caught up they'll be here click the playlist so I'm supposed to do <laughs> yeah we have no idea what's gonna happen next here's a quick preview of the next episode <laughs> and this is when Kara stopped having fun on the bike trip you kind of know before I do what's about to happen <laughs> what <laughs> thanks for watching